Morgan is here to be a little cutthroat today. Today I'm going to be ranking the worst and best luxury holiday 2022 collections. I actually haven't done really big shopper drops recently, so there's a lot of luxury collections that you've never heard mentioned on my channel. So this is where I am bringing them up. You might not have noticed, but my wallet sure did. I took a step back from a lot of luxury brands over the holiday season, and I'm going to share why and which ones I did end up purchasing and loving, and maybe some that I regret not purchasing. This is a new style of video for me trying. I see a lot of my favorite Sims channel doing a tier list ranking this way, so let me know how you guys like it. But before we get into that, I want to thank today's sponsor for the video, which is Lily. Silk. I've worked with them multiple times before. They create very luxurious products, including amazing silk products, as well as this cashmere sweater that I'm wearing today. I think they keep their silk prices at a reasonable price because it is such a high quality luxury item. These make great ideas for gifts, you guys. And Lily Silk has amazing items all across the board. I've bought bras from them in the past, pillowcases, clothing, pajamas. So I have some new products to share with you that I've really been enjoying. All these are going to make fabulous gifts starting off with what I'm wearing which is this gorgeous cashmere sweater I'm a little sweaty in it right now living in Florida but I cannot wait to take this up to Maryland because this cashmere sweater it feels so luxurious it's not itchy at all you have this turtleneck right here which you can also put up like this and I want you to take a look I just think it is so soft and expensive looking and then I do have short arms so I rolled up the sleeves but it still looks really nice and cozy. This sweater looks so nice with jeans. You can pair it with leggings and Uggs for a really cozy look. It also looks really nice with skirts. So this is a great option. I chose this color because it's more neutral. It's going to go with a lot more but I think this is a great option as a gift. Who doesn't love a good sweater and this one is really high quality so it's going to last a long time. I also have a new pair of silk pajamas. They are this gorgeous navy color. I feel so fancy schmancy walking around the house in this. Now it's really great to sleep in silk because the fabric itself is more breathable so if you're a hot sleeper this is a great set of pajamas to have. I feel like I look quite stylish walking around my house in these so I've been loving these silk pajamas and I don't have a lot of pajama sets so I'm really excited about that and I also have some new Lily Soft silk pillowcases. I am a huge believer in silk pillowcases. They have upgraded fabric which is softer and more elastic than common silk. There's zero colorants, it's premium silk, and the products that are marked dye-free and colorless are more suitable for sensitive skin types. They're easy for storage with a built-in compartment, easy to pack when traveling, and it's really the last step of your evening skincare routine because if you don't know, there's a lot of benefits to sleeping with silk. One being that it helps keep your skin hydrated, and because it is so soft and gentle of the skin because it is silk, it's actually anti-aging because it's not gonna crunch up your skin when you're sleeping. Fantastic for sensitive skin types as well, hypoallergenic, and then for your hair as well. It keeps hair soft, moisturized, tangle-free, helps with the frizz, which is a big problem that I have. So I really believe sleeping with silk pillowcases is one of the best things that you can do for your hair and skin without having to put any extra effort in. And the Lily Silk ones offer a lot of different colors, so that's really nice. And then I'm so excited. I have some new scrunchies. I am a silk scrunchy kind of gal. So Lily Silk actually collaborated with this Japanese artist to make some special designs of their hair scrunchies. I've been using their silk scrunchies for months, you guys, and look how beautiful these scrunchies are. And they come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes, and these last forever. I am still using the ones that I have from last year. They're very gentle on the hair as well. They help with not pulling hair out because they are made of silk. So I will have the link down to this scrunchie set down below. These are super nice just to pull your hair back without breaking up the hair. When you order from Lily Silk, they are all going to come beautifully packaged, especially for the holidays. They have a cute little ribbon. So I will have 
have the link down below to pick up everything that I talked about in today's video. And again, a huge thank you to Lily Silk for sponsoring today's video. Let's go ahead and get into the rest of it. Okay, you guys, so I have never done a video like this. So bear with me, but look what I made. I made a tier list. So I have all of the holiday luxury makeup collections that I had an interest in sharing and talking about. And then we're gonna rank it on the tier list. The top being the best must have, the good, the okay, the a little rusty, and the worst where I wouldn't even bother. It's very interesting about this website is that the red is the top that messes with my brain. But in this situation, red is good. So it's very hard when it comes to these luxury holiday collections because a lot of times there aren't clear cut like this is a holiday collection. Sometimes they'll launch multiple things within the period of holiday launches. So I have a couple different photos for different collections. So bear with me, I'll explain as we get there. But a huge shout out to beautyvel.com because I've totally used your pictures in here and it was a great resource for me to go back and take a look at all of the luxury collections. They did a beautiful job just organizing everything that was very easy for me to see what was in what collection. So I'm gonna link their website down below. I stole some of their images. <laughs> Thank you for creating these. It was very very helpful. That website is great. I use it all the time for reference, for learning about launches, so definitely check them out if you haven't. But let's go ahead and get started with Charlotte Tilbury, which is the first collection that I am going to talk about. I'm counting these all as one collection, but I have two different photos. So we have the Pillow Talk cheek quads, and then we have the eye glitters. So what makes this interesting is I did purchase these, but I did not purchase the eye glitters. So I'm actually gonna split them up. That's why I have two different photos. So we're gonna talk about the Pillow Talk face palettes. Now you guys know that I have these. I love these with no hesitation. These are the best and must have. Now maybe not both colors, but I love these. I think they add the prettiest pink freshness to the cheeks and they have a really pretty glow that's quite flattering on the skin. It's a very high quality product for me. This is one of the best launches of the holiday season, so that is definitely a must-have. Now where it gets tricky with these tier lists is I don't have all of these products, and I get a lot of hate for talking about products that I don't buy, but I also get a lot of hate for buying products that I know I'm not going to like. So I'm just going to save the money and we're going to talk about these next. Now this was tough because these are very, very, very pricey. And that is why I didn't pick these up because for an individual shade, I thought it was a lot of money. But I've heard from so many of you that these were really great and high quality. So while I can't give my personal opinion on how these worked for me, I trust you guys. I have multiple people on multiple videos telling me what's good and what's not. So based on the overall consensus from you guys, I am going to put the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in the good because it's not going to go in the best because it is pricey. I mean, that was enough to turn me off of the product alone. But based on the feedback that I got from you guys, the quality of these are really, really nice. So I think this is a safe bet if you want to pick these up from Charlotte Tilbury. Okay, next up we have the NARS Holiday Collection. They have an eyeshadow palette and a cheek palette and then an individual blush. So I picked up two items from the Holiday Collection, the blush and the eyeshadow palette. I thought the eyeshadow palette was very nice, but it wasn't unique. And I thought that the cheek palette was nice, but it wasn't my personal favorite formula. I'm just not in love with that formula from NARS, but I love how both items looked on the cheek. Now the other items in the collection, I didn't pick up because I just didn't need them. I think I'm going to place this collection in the okay category. They're decent quality, especially the eyeshadow palette. I actually really love the look that I got with the eyeshadow palette. It was just something that I already had a billion times over in the collection, and I thought the packaging looked a bit tacky, <laughs> sorry NARS, but it's not bad quality. It's not a risk really to purchase. So I'm putting the NARS holiday collection in the okay category. Next up, we have the Tom Ford Soleil Neige collection. Now my photo on the tier list is all broken up, but here, here's what it looks like you guys can see. I didn't pick up the lip balm 
I did pick up the eyeshadow palettes, but you can see they are already on sale. These are $90 full price. That's what I paid for them. And they are pretty. These are not Tom Ford's biggest fails. But I spent a lot of money on these and I was disappointed because in the past, Tom Ford for their Soleil Neige collections, they have launched some really beautiful, super high quality palettes that I've loved from this collection. Unfortunately, this year, I thought they were eh. Now, I did like the way that they looked on my eyes. I thought it was really pretty. One of them particularly has a very nice lid topper kind of formula that's gorgeous, but I don't think that they are worth the money. So I'm gonna put Tom Ford's Soleil Neige's collection in the risky. It is not the worst thing you could purchase this year, but it also isn't really worth the money in my opinion, potentially on sale, but there are many more Tom Ford quads and items that I would recommend over the ones that launched this year. So yeah. Next up in line, you see we have the Pat McGrath Labs Holiday Collection. Can I slide this over? Yeah, we're even gonna put it before the Charlotte Tilbury because whew, I loved this collection. I purchased almost everything from the collection. There was a few things that I didn't, but we're gonna focus on the main points, which is the Mega Mothership palette, which you know I love. It's very, very colorful, so it probably isn't for everybody, but it's a great value. Then you have the two blush quads that also include a highlighter. Really, really great value, especially if you picked it up with the up to 40% off sale that they had, amazing value. And then the two eyeshadow quints in the collection are one of my all-time favorites that I've tried during the holiday season. Everything about the collection I thought was really well done. If you were able to pick it up on sale because Pat McGrath always has sales, it makes the value even better. So yes, while Pat McGrath is expensive, I really don't think she did wrong with this collection. I had a lot of fun with it. I've talked about it in so many videos because obviously I thought it was that good. So, uh, so far of all of the rankings, it's the best one, the best holiday collection. I am biased. I love Pat McGrath, but couldn't go wrong. Next up, let's talk about the Chanel collection. Now, this is a collection that I did not try, but I did see this collection in stores, and Chanel was one of those brands that I did try and get back into over the last couple of years. I purchased some of their launches, but every time I always thought to myself, most of this is not worth the money, and it's a little bit repetitive for what I have in my collection. So this year I decided not even to spend my own money. I've watched reviews from other people. You guys have also told me. So I've collected a little bit of information about this collection. But overall, for me, I'm going to put it in the risky. I'm just not attracted to this collection at all. It's a repetition of formulas, not even really new formulas here, just another gold champagne collection, uninspiring and a little expensive. Now that being said, I know there are so many of you guys who love Chanel products and enjoyed this collection, but for me, it's a little risky. I think you might have these shades. I don't think these formulas are anything special. I'm not saying they're Bad, but in this holiday collection in particular, nothing called to me about it. And I swatched these in stores. I still really wasn't moved. So I don't know if it's better than the Tom Ford or not, because I did like the Tom Ford and I thought the Chanel was pretty, but it's not for me. That's that. That's why I'm putting it there. It's like I almost like want to put it in the worst because it's so boring to me. We're going to leave it there, but I we'll see what else what else we're working with. So then we have the Dior Holiday Collection and I for the last couple of years have purchased pretty much everything that Dior has launched. And over the last few months, I have uh, stopped doing that because I found their formulas to be really really inconsistent. I found their formulas to be really, really inconsistent and also repetitive when it comes to color story. While they make their embossments really pretty because they know how to get me. An embossment will get me. I pass on this collection. I think that the quince look really gorgeous, but the big face palettes that you see that come out every holiday season, they're meh. I've played with those in the past. The lipsticks are normal. I love a Dior blush. So I had a hard time saying no to these because they have a special embossment. I am gonna put 
put this year's collection in okay now all of these brands also come out with their own category of like gift sets i'm not talking about the gift sets because dior does a killer job with their gift sets packaging in particular it always gets me but of what they launched that is new in the holiday collection like new products this is what dior launched and i'm just gonna call it okay I haven't tried them but i have a lot of experience with dior and i wasn't wowed but they do look very very pretty i um, i'm uncomfortable i don't know i just mm, i'm sure they're good but I, same thing different year oh my goodness we have the hourglass ambient lighting cheek palettes i was really excited for this year's because you could customize the artwork on the palette that you got and they had three very different color stories i bought all three without hesitation i did give my mom one though but i'm just gonna go ahead before i praise it i think this is one of my favorite holiday launches i really really do they have the best formula in my opinion now you don't need all three but i think the curations in these palettes was better than ever in the previous years this was worth every penny to me the packaging so so cute it's an item that i recommend every single year and i'm never ever disappointed and i think they really killed it this year they brought amazing curations so for me this one is definitely must have so i love that one i don't even know why i'm talking about this but i do always look at givenchy i love the little quad powders that they have that you see here and the lipsticks this is quite the underwhelming holiday launch is it not um i'm like thinking do i want it to go here or here because at least chanel put some thought into it so i'm gonna put it down in the worst i can't speak on the quality on this and I do like Givenchy's powders, but they put some silver packaging on it and called it a day. It looks to me like Givenchy has these items already. It feels very uninspired to me and doesn't attract me at all. So we'll put that there. But like I said, quality could be very, very nice, but I'm also talking about my perception of the collection and that's that's my perception. Next up, we have the Chantecaille Holiday Collection, which instantly I am in love with the packaging. You have a, like a mineral glowy blush. You have a highlight in here. You have a glittery lipstick. This is really, really stunning. I'm hesitant with Chantecaille. I think they have really, really good products, but I do find them to be a bit overpriced. I think they killed it with the packaging here. I haven't tried anything from this collection, so keep that in mind, but I think it is beautiful. So I'm going to put this, assuming that the quality is amazing, as Shantika normally is based on my experience, I'm going to put it in good. If it's as good as I think the quality will be. I'm hesitant because I want to put it here. Because I don't know that it is better than the NARS collection. Because I at least liked the NARS collection enough to purchase it. But Shantikai normally does a really good job. Oh, I don't know. This one is hard. The final answer would have to be actually trying it. But I really like the package. No. Girl, I just thought about it. Look at how light these are. Never mind, that's going right there. <laughs> okay, this is not really a holiday launch, but it came out in the time of holiday launches. And I, I want to slander this, if I'm being honest. I purchased this palette for $150 last year, not this exact one. And it was like children's makeup. I did not purchase this year's but I asked for an update from you guys and you said it was also child's makeup. So this is supposed to be the same quality as last year. This is the worst because it is the biggest waste of money. Now, the only thing I liked about last year's and this year's is the packaging. It's gorgeous. Not completely mad that I purchased it because I do really like the packaging. I buy things for packaging, okay? It is what it is. At least I can admit it. But the quality, children's makeup. I love Gucci Beauty, but what on earth are they doing with this? This needs to stop. <laughs> I'm putting it out the words. Next up, okay, Natasha Denona. I'm like, what was your holiday collection, girl? Because I have three different photos, okay? So first here we have the Baby Metropolis, 
or the mini, excuse me. And I believe this is the baby Biba. These are really great stocking stuffers. They are a great way to try Natasha Denona without breaking the bank all at once. These are good. I'm going to put them right here. They're very good quality. If you want to travel with Natasha Denona, this is great. I did a video on the Metropolis already. And I think I've, I have these colors. I have palettes like these. Maybe not these in particular. But they are a good buy. They are. We also have the Baby Gold, which I did do a video on because I already have the swatches. Again, very good. Very tiny. I'm going to put this in okay because it's not that exciting. I don't know. I don't know where this goes. I'm unsure. I think that this launch is a little better than just the Baby Gold because it's just so repetitive. But it's good quality. Okay, I'm going to put it right here. Let's put it right here. It's okay. It's good quality, but it's it's pretty boring. You have to want it for travel. And then how on earth Retro Glam is a holiday collection is beyond me because this does not look holiday-y at all to me. You know, at least when she came out with the Metropolis palette, like those are holiday colors. Nothing about this screams holiday launch. The only thing that it screams is it came out in the holiday time. But other than that, not a holiday launch, but... I mean, it's good. Now, if you're new here, my thoughts on the palette, I love Natasha Denona. However, this palette didn't move me. It didn't. I, at first, when I saw the photos, I was so, so, so excited for it. I was like, this is it. I love it. This is what I've been asking for. And then I got it. And then I was like... <sighs> I don't really like that man. You know, it's Natasha Denona. I love it. I love the quality. I love the look of the palette itself. But in terms of translating it onto my eyelids, I don't want to reach for it as much as I want to reach for my other palettes. So it's interesting that I placed this behind the Charlotte Tilbury, which I haven't even tried. But I believe you guys when you say this is awesome. Like, I think I would really like a product like this. I just don't want to spend the money. But this one, you know, I'm, I just don't love it. I like it, but I just don't love it. So I think it's going to go there. Okay, another one I did a whole video on why I will not be purchasing. I think I've changed my mind, but I did a video on why I was not purchasing anything from the Lisa Aldridge holiday collection. I've watched some reviews. A lot of people have sold it to me. I like, I want to get at least one or two now. The quality is supposed to be amazing. Maybe here? Maybe, right? Yeah, because I think everybody that has gotten this has absolutely loved it, right? For me, the color stories did not call out to me. I was overwhelmed with the price point for having to try a new brand. You know, I have my set brands that I review on my channel, and I only have so much time to film with all of the makeup and the brands that I covered, so I just didn't want to add another brand, particularly one that was more on the pricey side. But I trust you guys. You said these are amazing, so I'm going to put these at good. Not at best, because I was unable to justify it for the price point. But this this could change. I am I might, I might buy one, because you guys told me I had to. So you have convinced me. I am influenced. Busy Art launched like eight palettes. I did a swatch and sip on these. Some palettes are prettier than others. That's how it's going to work when you launch eight different color stories. Uh, if you want to see my swatch and sip, I had a lot of fun with these. Some color stories I found to be quite boring. Some I found to be quite beautiful, but you know, none were like extremely unique or anything. I think overall the quality was very, very good on these. You know, I didn't notice any inconsistencies. So I think we're going to put it right here. It's a good buy. It is a good, but it's not the most exciting. So I kind of want to like bring it down here. Like it's okay, but it, it's, it's a good buy. It is. Next up, Valentino Beauty. The way that I almost put these in my cart at Sephora, then I, no, no, no. Actually, I did put this in my cart at Sephora. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the little purse thing and lipstick thing at the bottom. I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cute. And then I went to the register and it was like $250. I was like, take that off. I don't want that anymore. Um, I did dabble into Valentino Beauty for the first time during the Sephora <laughs> sale event. And I actually picked up this coral blush but in the on holiday collection so it's a little bit more boring 
we'll put this in risky, right? I haven't tried a ton of formulas from Valentino Beauty, but if you're buying Valentino Beauty, you are buying for the name. The quality was good from everything that I've tried, but it's for the packaging and it's for the name. No judgment if you do that. That's why I did it. It's fine, but it's risky because the little purse thing, I've seen videos on the little, the little makeup item with a strap. That's bougie to the max. If you want to spend money on it, go for it. I'm putting it at risky. Okay, Bobbi Brown. I have a few photos for Bobbi Brown, right? Because they also had multiple collections, starting off with this very nude, boring, repetitive palette, but still pretty nonetheless. I used to purchase Bobbi Brown every year. I stopped a few years ago. It just got really bland and boring for me, and I feel like this is the exact depiction of why I stopped purchasing from the brand. I'm sure it's good quality, but let's put it at risky because personally, I'm not into it. I haven't tried the quality, so, and haven't even been told by you guys if the quality is good, but I haven't been impressed with the quality of Bobbi Brown eyeshadows recently. So assuming that it's still the same case, I think that's fitting. Now, what looks beautiful is this part of the collection from Bobbi Brown. I stopped buying Bobbi Brown. Not interested in it anymore. It's a little boring, but these look quite luxe. So I almost don't know where to put these because they look really good, but I don't know if they are actually really good. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it right here, right next to the other Bobbi Brown, but it's definitely going above the other Bobbi Brown. It's risky because I can't tell you. I have no clue. If you've tried it, let me know. Comment, make sure you comment down below so that we can know because I'm not sure. But it's beautiful. Now, another beautiful thing from Bobbi Brown that I couldn't convince myself to purchase at all is this Emerald palette. I think I'm gonna put it at okay. Based on my experience with Bobbi Brown, which is okay quality, and the color story, which I think is very, very trendy and really beautiful and something that I would wear, I think this is gonna be an okay purchase. Now, emphasis on the I think. I didn't want to spend my money to find out, and that's that. So that right there, we'll put it in the okay category. And then the last collection that I have is from YSL. Now I have two different photos down here. I'm just gonna pull one up. They're of the same collection. YSL is a brand that I want to love so much. I actually do have products from the brand that I do really, really love, but this collection just screams, mm to me. I think it's prettier than the Chanel. I've never gotten the courage to purchase a YSL eyeshadow palette because they are very, very pricey and the color story does not inspire me at all. This one's a little bit more like rich than ones that they've launched previously, but I'm still not feeling it. The lipsticks, you know, are great quality, but how many lipstick shades can we have? So I think I don't, I, I, I it's like, at least the Bobbi Brown's prettier. So we're gonna put it there. Because I haven't heard great things about the eyeshadow formula. The lipsticks are really, really nice, but you can get them any time of year. But I feel like the gold packaging maybe, I don't know. It's a little harder to rank the ones that I haven't tried, but in terms of my perception, I feel like that's where it should go. So anyways, this is how I would rank all of the... <laughs> best and worst luxury holiday collections. Kudos to you if you've tried this because thank you for taking one for the team. At least let me know down below if there's anything you disagree with. Is there an item that I put at the bottom that you think deserves to be put at the top because the quality is kick butt. I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video. It was a little bit different for me. So let me know what you think. Do I need to keep doing this? And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. A huge thank you to Lily Silk for sponsoring today's video. I will have the link down below to purchase everything that I talked about today as well as to check out the website. They have everything, I'm telling you. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.